Good evening, Battle Branch. This is Sean. I just wanted to share a message with the church before we get started with our service to let y'all know that to keep praying for our service and keep praying for our community and for our country. And I want to make sure that we share the message with our families here that we're currently still awaiting out the situation to determine when we will open up the church. But if you will, just keep your prayers with us and I'm going to turn it over to Diane for our song. Thank you. No, and I'll 
not talk with me. I'll just look how big my God is and climb the victory. No more to live in bondage. No more I walk in fear. No more will I have to be alone. What we will church. Um, it's good for me to be back tonight and try to bring a few hopefully encouraging words to you. Uh, as Sean said, we hope that uh, we can get some more information soon. We, we do have our FM um, repeater ordered and I don't know for sure when it'll be here, but just as soon as it is, we'll let you know and then maybe we can have some uh, services in the parking lot or something. That's what we're trying to work toward. But anyway, tonight, um, just keep praying and praying for our church and for one another and, and pray that, you know, we can get over this and we will get over this with God's help. And I want to read to you tonight out of Proverbs and start reading in, in chapter one of Proverbs, and then I want to go on over to chapter three. But I want to talk to you about uh, God's blessings. And we all have uh, read and thought about God's blessings, but the scripture tells us how to get the blessings of God. And it tells us how that uh, the life, if we live a certain way, that we're not going to get the blessings of God. So I want to read just a little bit in chapter one and, and just talk on that. And then we'll get on over into chapter three. So in chapter one, and I, I wish I took time to read the whole thing, but I'm just going to read you just a little of it. And he's talking about how that, that a lot of folks live their lives and, and God's not in it. And then they wonder, you know, where is God and why is God not here? Uh, it's, it's the life that we're living. So if you look at your life and you can't see God in it, then allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and, and the word of God. The word of God that, that I'm going to read to you here tonight will speak to our hearts if we'll open up our heart to God and allow God to speak to us. Now, uh, when I start reading here, he's, he's going to talk about the life that folks live that, that don't, don't have the blessings of God and uh, what God says about it. So let me start reading. It says, how long, you sim simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. That's found in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 22. And then in verse 23, it says, Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Now, I, I mentioned listening to the spirit of God, allowing the spirit of God to speak to our hearts. And then he says that he will make known my words unto you. 
Well, that's what God has done. He's put his words here in, in the Bible and he has called men to preach the word and bring the word to us. So we're hearing the word. And if we'll open up our heart to the spirit, then the spirit will speak to us and draw us to God. And then we can understand what God is saying to us. A lot of people say, well, I don't understand the Bible. I read the Bible, but I don't understand the Bible. Well, if you will open up your heart and allow the spirit of God to come in, then that gives you a greater understanding whenever the spirit of God comes into our hearts. He says, I will make known my words unto you because I have called and you refused. Now, God is calling to this world today. God is, is calling uh, his word is calling and the Holy Spirit is calling to this world today. But God sees our heart. Uh, and wherever you're at here tonight, God sees every single one of our hearts. God sees my heart. God sees your heart. And God knows whether we are wanting to listen to him and listen to his word. And our lives show whether we are following the word of God, because I'm going to read to you the instructions over here. If, if I read the blessings of God, every single one on the face of this earth would say, I would like to have the blessings of God. But how many of us want it enough that we'll seek after it as we would find gold? Uh, there's been a many of a man that has lost his life uh, digging after gold, uh, uh, caves fall in. They they try to mine or go dig get gold underwater. Uh, the just drowned or many people have lost their lives many ways by seeking after gold. Whenever uh, it's not going to bring you the peace that the Word of God and what God says here. Now we say we want the Word. We want the, the blessings of God. Well, I'm going to read to you here in a few minutes how that you can get the blessings of God. So, so listen, he says, because I have called and you refused, I've stretched out my arm or my hands and no man regarded. Now, what he's saying, God is stretching his hand out to me and you. It's as if we're walking through this life and it's on thin ice and the ice is fixing to break and God is stretching out his hands. Now, are we trying to come to God or are we saying, nope, I can make it on my own? Well, I'm going to read to you what happens whenever we say we're going to make it on our own. Uh, but you have said at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. If we go through life and we say, I'm going to make it on my own, I don't need God, then God says, I will laugh at your calamity uh, because it will come. And he goes on. He said, I will mock when your fear come. God said, I'll laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your fear come. Now, God has got his arms outstretched to us. God's Holy Spirit is calling us. God's word is calling us. And all of it is calling us to God, coming closer to God. And if we would look under the arms of God, Jesus said one time, as he looked out over Jerusalem, he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Now he was on a hill looking down upon Jerusalem and his heart broke as he looked down there and how the people ignored the prophets and how they ignored the word of God. And he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered thee together as a hen gathers her chicks and you would not. And what God's saying, he said, my arms are outstretched. And when you're in the arms of God, you're in safety. That is the only safe place. How in the world, people say, how can God get the whole world in his arms? That's God, and God can do that. Amen. 
And that's what we need to do is get closer to God and come and draw nigh to him. He said, he said, I'll, I'll laugh at your calamity. I will mock at your fear. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Now, let's look and let's, let's just uh, be sensible here just for a minute. Is not America uh, needing something? And, and people, we've got smart doctors and great doctors and wonderful caregivers all over this, this world. But this world needs Jesus. This world needs God. And, and if we will, and, and, and it starts with you, every single one of us is where it starts at. You say, I can't do uh, much. I'm just one. Well, look back through the word of God and we're one person. Believe the word of God and change nations and, and, and countries and, and one person that believes God and obeys God can do great things for God. God's looking down here and he's wanting to find somebody that he can invest in. And God wants to invest in us people. He said, then shall they call me, but I will not answer they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. And then look at this, and, and then I'm going to jump on over into uh, chapter 3. They would none of my counsel. God said, I've offered them counsel. I've offered the world counsel. And they didn't want any of it. And, and I'm afraid that that's one reason that we're in the situation that we're in today. And a lot of people says, well, you're just getting out too far on a limb. I believe the word of God. And I believe what God says. And I believe that if we will draw near to God, God will take care of us. And, and wherever you're at tonight, if you're in Raven County or wherever you may be, it needs to start with us tonight, drawing closer to him. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit. Now God is going to give to people uh, uh, the fruits of their labors. Listen to this. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. So if you want the goodness of God, I'm going to show you down here how to get it. I just showed you here. He said, he said they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be, uh, be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear and evil. Now, that is showing, God's showing us here what happens to a man's life when he rejects everything about God. And God's word is showing to us here uh, how that we can receive God's blessings. Now, let me jump over here in chapter three and read to you. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Now here, he's telling us to look into the word of God and see what the word of God says and, and, and to, to bind it about our heart and our soul and get it inside of us and, and, and understand what the Word of God says. It says, here, uh, a lot of people are looking for a long life. Well, listen to what he said. For length of days and long life and peace and peace. These three things right here, man has been looking for and trying to find and it is free for anyone that will believe this word and come to god and to follow this word right here shall they add to thee let not mercy now mercy is kindness and this world needs kindness really it's kindness in excess it's it means uh, not just saying, uh, seeing somebody in need and saying, well, bless you. 
but seeing somebody in need and going out of your way and being kind and trying to help that person. That is what he's saying. Uh, mercy. And, and we're seeing less and less that uh, in, in the days that we live in. I'm so thankful that our church has had mercy and has tried to help all the people that it's helped. And God has blessed us for that. He says, let not mercy and truth, the truth, the word of God is truth. This word is truth. I believe this word. And, and I fear God. And a lot of times the fear of God is what makes us follow the word of God. Uh, so we need to have the fear of God uh, here. It says, uh, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. The word of God, uh, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Study the word of God. Know the word of God. It's not the old wives fables, but let's look into the word of God. There's a lot of old wives fables out there, but let's see what thus saith the word of God. Spend some quiet time in the word, seeing what God says. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding. Now here, there's a lot of, a lot of people that, that have gone on the wrong paths, uh, that, that thought, boy, I'm, I'm doing good here, or they'll see somewhere, some church that seems like a, a, a what I've called popcorn religion, that it flames up for a little while, everybody flocks and tries to go that route. But what he's saying, <clears throat> thou shalt find favor <clears throat> and good understanding. God will give you understanding of the word. And God will give you a spirit inside you that will help you discern the spirits that are out there. He says, thou shalt find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. We all would like to have that blessing. Good understanding of the word of God. Good understanding of God. Understanding what the word says. And, and, um, Thou shalt find favor. Uh, we all would like to have uh, the favor of God upon our lives. And we can have that, is what he's saying. And man. And here he says this, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now, where is our heart being? Now, think about it. Nobody knows you any better than you know yourself. Uh, through this time, where, where's your heart been? The last week, where's your heart been? Now, God said that he wanted our heart. God wants us to be uh, caring and love with him and caring about him. And, and have we thought about God just only when we needed God? Or have we stopped somewhere along the way of life? And if we just still away somewhere in our prayer closet or wherever we have that we pray. And if we just knelt down and thank God for his blessings. Now think about that. Or do you know what I see this world has done? Has went wide open like a hungry uh, whatever uh, after uh, the things of this world and passed God up. And what God is saying to me and you is for us to, to slow back down, get back down here, realize where our uh, blessing, where the goodness of life comes from, and it comes from God. Uh, how was America built where it was at, where it is uh, today? In God we trust. And it seems like so much of the world is wanting to take in God we trust away. We need to bring in God we trust back. We need to get God in our schools. We need to get God in, in our factories. We need to get God in everything. And it's sad to say, but a lot of the churches have seemed to have moved God out. And it's simply because of the lives that we live. Whenever we start seeking God, and I found out in my life when I got, uh, go to seeking God, then God starts showing me the things that I need to get out of my life to where I can be a better Christian. So there's blessings 
in serving God. But, uh, and, and we've seen, as I read to you here to start with, uh, how that God said, it's up to you, you choose. You choose. Uh, I choose. Do I want God in my life? Or do I want uh, 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 to go on and try to walk on this thin ice out here on my own? And it says, if I choose not to have God, whenever the ice starts cracking, he's just going to lie. But folks, why don't we choose God while we have an opportunity? Why don't we come to God while we can? He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Amen. Now, right there is where a lot of us fail. We lean on our what we think that we know whenever we don't know anything without God. So uh, whatever it is, whatever you're doing, you need to uh, uh, pray about it. You need to saturate it uh, with prayer and that means every part of our life God please help me through this day God guide me through this day God put somebody in my path this day that I can tell them about you or show them about your goodness and that I might help them and show them that 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 love and that kindness that only you have <clears throat> I was talking today to a guy and um, I said, well, maybe I ought to, to do this. Uh, and and somebody had, had done something maybe that I didn't think was right. And um, the, the guy told me, he said, no, you ought not to do anything. He said, just because somebody acts a certain way don't mean that you have to act a certain way. And that's, that's truth, and that's wisdom. And, and that's what we need to look at. What would God do? Now, God is saying all this time, I want you to come to me, and I want you to understand how that if you walk with me, I, it's just like whenever I told you about Jesus looking down on Jerusalem, saying he gathered them together as a hen gathers her chicks. And that's exactly what God would do. And, and God is giving that cry. We've all probably seen a mama hen. I know we used to have little bannies when I was growing up, a lot of bannies and different kind of chickens, but uh, an old banny hen seemed like she would uh, hatch off more little chickens than you'd think she could cover. And, and I've seen a, 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 a dog or a hawk or something make a noise and, and that, that hen would make a certain noise and when she did, she'd just throw her wings out and have one of them little fellas would get under there. And that's exactly what God is telling me and you today. And, and there's no need for us to go through this life living in fear and saying, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just so worried about it. We trust God. Trust God and follow God and God will take care of us. And, and people, God will take care of our church and our people. Uh, but people, we have got to trust God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. We have got to trust him and, and, and follow him in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. In all thy ways, acknowledge God. In every one of our ways, acknowledge God. Ask God to be with you when you plant your garden. Ask God to be with you when you're uh, digging the weeds out of it. Uh, who knows? There might be a snake out there. But you still need to ask God to be with you in every part of your life. Everywhere you go, everything you do. Acknowledge uh, him and he shall direct thy paths. But you know what? Sometimes we get so bullheaded that we just want to go on with our own paths. But let me tell you something. God is able to bring down the biggest bull also. So people, we need to acknowledge him in everything and allow God to direct our paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord 
and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Now listen to this verse right here and I'm going to close. Honor the Lord with all thy substance. Honor the Lord. Honor God. Have you ever thought about uh, what honor means? Think about it. And it says to honor the Lord. For us to give honor to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the sun. Thank you for the rain. Uh, I told somebody, uh, I believe it was, I don't know, I've been Justin tonight. Somebody, uh, we had a, a wonderful rain, a blessed rain. Uh, uh, and, and thank God for every part of our lives. Two years ago, we were, we were praying for rain. Amen. Then God gives us rain. And what do we do? We go back to complaining. Uh, makes me think of the children of Israel. So what we need to do is start start lifting our hands to heaven. And, and a lot of people is ashamed anymore to lift their hands to God. Praise God. And don't be ashamed of God. And let God, I'm not saying let's go out here and put on a show for people, uh, but but let's get somewhere, just, just you and God. And lift your hands up to heaven. And, and bow your head before Almighty God and ask God's guidance. I'm not saying get out here. A lot of people like to get out on the streets. The Bible talks about those hypocrites and, and all of that that like to show themselves and look what I'm doing and look at this and look at that. Uh, God is looking for us to steal away somewhere in a quiet place. And God might be giving us this quiet time here to seek him. So let's try our best to honor God, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So let's look at the scriptures and let's see what God says and then let's follow what God says. My prayer tonight is that all of us will seek him and follow him and ask God to help us get through this and take care of all of our folks. And I believe that God will. So let us pray. Father, we humbly bow before you again tonight, asking God for your precious blessings, God. Lord, your word tells us how to get them. And Lord, it tells us what's going to happen if we don't follow you. And God, I pray that you'd help every one of us, God, to, to follow you with, with every part of our being, Lord. And God, that you would just speak to us and, and Lord, that you'd give us the word and we could just bind it around our hearts and our souls. And, and God, we could follow you in a way that would please you. I pray for your people, God, all over this world. God, your people scattered out all over this world. And I pray for every one of them, Lord. God, that you would comfort them and help them. And let us all realize that, Father, we need to draw close to you. And God, as long as we're in your arms, Lord, we're in safety, God. So I thank you for that. I pray for the churches and the pastors and your, your children all over, God, that you would help us all. And God, just meet our needs and help us to understand and help us to get in, in the paths, God, that you'd have us to be in. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.